I'm often accused of downplaying the horrors associated with the breakdown of this set of living arrangements. In a similar vein, I'm accused of failing to provide the mechanism by which 7.5 billion people will soon die. I'm here to set both records straight. I still don't know when you will die, or how, and I do not desire the outcome I foresee. First of all, apparently I need to point out the ongoing horrors of industrial civilization, the most violent set of living arrangements ever devised. Many are tortured and killed so that a few privileged people can retain their privilege. If you're among the families of the millions who die every year as a result of anthropogenic climate change, I need not convince you. If you're among the families of the millions who die every year at the hand of the U.S. military, I need not convince you. Many already live and die at the receiving end of oppression. What does the future hold? There's little doubt Cormac McCarthy's 2006 book, The Road, was optimistic. That book included survivors. This one doesn't. Civilization will collapse catastrophically for any number of reasons. Climate change likely will be a primary driver. When industrial civilization reaches its overdue end, there will be no fuel at the filling stations, no food at the grocery stores, and no water coming out the municipal taps. Unpaid first responders will return home to care for their families. The world's abandoned nuclear facilities will melt down catastrophically. Leading causes of human mortality will include dehydration as the water stops flowing through the taps, starvation due to lack of food delivery, disease as prevention and treatment facilities are shuttered, suicide as horror film fantasy becomes reality, and predation leading to capitalism. I've no doubt desperate people accustomed to enormous privilege will resort to desperate measures to stay alive. The initial shock will be horrific. The expectations of systems being restored will give way to resignation, only one dying person at a time. Desperate pleas for help will be met with silence. And then, it'll all get worse. The dead will be envied by the living, even as the evolutionarily motivated will to live persists. The survivors will see a world virtually lacking life. Non-human animals will be unable to keep up with rapidly disintegrating ecosystems. There will be no food, no habitat. Plants cannot move and cannot be moved because the fragile web of mycorrhizae, fungi, and other place-based organisms will die in soils abruptly too dry, too wet, too hot, and too cold. Earth will increasingly resemble Mars. The last humans will die miserably in their bunkers, thirsty, hungry, lonely except for like-minded sociopaths, and marinating in ionizing radiation. The year? 2025.